Welcome to the world of amazing animal disguises. Hmm, where is it? Hi, Henry. What are you doing? Something. Come on, Henry, what's up? I know it's in here somewhere. I was wondering where that was. Henry, hello. Henry. I'm talking to you. Aha. Henry. Excuse me, you are Henry. Henry's not here. Henry. I'm sorry. You must be mistaken me for someone else. We know it's you, Henry. If you want some disguise tips, you should take a look at some of these experts. Huh? Many animals have found lots of different ways to not be seen when they don't want to be. Okay, okay. Staying hidden is what being a master of disguise is all about. Master of disguise. There's nothing here. Oops. I guess maybe there is. Okay. Who else is hiding around here? Wait a minute. I smell a rat. Or see a snake. Disguises help animals to stay hidden. Spots, stripes, lookalikes. There are all kinds of ways for animals to blend in with the scenery. looking at a bird dropping? It may look like a bird dropping, but it's actually a caterpillar in disguise. Think about it. Who would want to eat a bird dropping? Yeah, no volunteers here. Or a see-through fish. Fish buries itself in the sand, but its eyes still stick out to look for danger. I thought there was something fishy. Those disguises were great, only... Only what? I wish I could find a really good disguise. Hey! So, are you still trying to come up with a good disguise, Henry? <laughs> that shirt doesn't exactly say subtle, does it? Now tell me what that ball has in common with all these things. The stripes? Yeah, stripes are a great way for animals to blend into their surroundings. But these stripes stand out like a sore thumb! How many zebras do you see? Um... Those stripes mean that predators can't tell where one zebra begins and another one ends. Cheetahs can only see in shades of black and white, so the zebra's stripes won't even stand out against the green of the grass. Well, how can it ever catch them then? The best it can do is to try to split up the herd and scare a small foal into the open where the cheetah can see it better. Yeah, and spot a meal. Get it? Spots! Stripes! But not this time. This cheetah's just out for a stroll. Hey, take a close look here. Can you see anything? Yeah, well, no, but... No buts. It's because of stripes again. When the bongo antelope stands in the dappled light of the forest, it's got the perfect camouflage. You're right! Animals do have some pretty amazing disguises. Now you see them, now you don't. Or, now you don't see them, and now you do. Disguises can help animals avoid becoming an easy meal, whether they live on land, in the air, or under the sea.
The eight-legged octopus can actually change the color and even the texture of its skin to match its surroundings. But even this master of disguise has to be careful. Whoop, whoop, eel alert! Don't worry, the octopus has another trick up his tentacle. The octopus can fire a cloud of ink to make its escape. And it changes color and texture again, blending into the rock to recover. Which way did he go? How does the octopus change colors like that? The same as a cuttlefish. They both have special skin cells that work just like tiny tubes of paint. The more you squeeze them, the more the color comes out. It works in reverse, too. The cuttlefish can suck all the color back in. But not all animals need to be quick change artists. Pipefish just sway like strands of seaweed and blend into the scenery. Neat! Remember how stripes are used to fool hunters? Well, some hunters, like tigers, use stripes to hide from their prey. Henry, are you listening? What are you doing? Disguising myself, see? You look ridiculous. What? Very impressive, Henry. You certainly got yourself a new look there. Uh-oh, I think I may have overdone it. Well, you won't win any awards for originality. Awards! Good idea! And the nominees for Best Animal Disguise are... Third prize to the Patu Bird that looks like a tree stump. He's the one on the right. Runner-up is the, uh, Pooh Bug, so named because... Um, thank you, Henry. And the winner is... The winner is... The original Quick Change Kid, the eye-swivelingly excellent Chameleon! Don't try this at home. Henry, did you hear me? I said, don't try this at home. How you doing? Chameleons have the amazing ability to change colors to match their surroundings, or even their mood, when they are angry or in love. You'd have to be a lizard to love a face like that. But color changing is most useful for catching prey. This I gotta see. This you will see. This chameleon's on the trail of a meal. He'll have no problem. Whatever his lunch is, it'll never see him coming. I think both you and the chameleon are in for a bit of a surprise. Chameleons like to eat bugs, but the insects in this tree are prepared to defend themselves with some clever disguises of their own. Hey now, that is clever. He's so still, he's just like a branch blowing in the wind. That's right. Chameleons hunt by movement. So as long as their prey all keep still and stick with their disguises, they'll fool the chameleon every time. Don't move, guys! What is that? Is that really a bug? Chameleon can look in two directions at once. Handy for crossing the street. <laughs> before it finally zeroes in on its prey.
Henry, turn that boat around. Way! Not all the way. Uh-oh. I hope he doesn't sink. Looks can be deceptive, you know. That sargasso seaweed hides countless creatures who live their whole lives drifting with it. These underwater hitchhikers do their best to match the decor, because hidden somewhere in every clump, there's a sargasso anglerfish. Look at the mouth on that! Whoa! It didn't use its disguise to hide! It used it to attack! I'm afraid there are plenty of uses for a disguise, and they're not all defensive. From ocean to river, and yet more disguises and nasty surprises. Those little neon tetras had better be careful, because something somewhere has got its eyes on them. Huh? What? A hungry leaf fish. And if that doesn't get you, then there's always something else lurking. A matter matter turtle, to be exact. Looks like a matter matter of life and death to me. <laughs> oh, there goes another one. That matter matter turtle was pretty ugly. I think I'd rather be disguised as something a little more attractive. Like what? Like me. Ah. Oh. for your report on the decorator crab. Um, my report is on how the decorator crab got its name. And just how did it? Well, there was this crab who lived down under the waves on the seabed. The seabed's not that comfy. Anyway, it can get boring at the bottom of the sea. That's because all you've got to look at is sand. And seaside rock. And shells! Not shelves! Shells! That's better. But one crab had a really brilliant idea. He thought his home would look better with decorations. Not Christmas decorations. Decorations around the house. But he didn't have a house. No, he lived on the seabed. Where he covered everything in paint. Oh, all sorts of paint. Like oil paints, poster paints, and watercolors. And he painted things all the colors of the rainbow. Though he liked orange best. The other ocean creatures saw his painting and asked him to paint their ocean homes, too. So he made lots of money thanks to his decorations. Not cake <laughs> decorations. He painted walls and ceilings. And he'll paint your house, too. As long as you pay him. So, in case there's any confusion, that's how the decorator crab got his name. Henry, do you really expect us to believe that? Maybe. Well, that's nonsense, you silly lizard. The real reason it's called the decorator crab is because it decorates or disguises its body with things it finds on the seabed. Hey, is it tickling that sea anemone? Yes, and in just the right place. Tickling makes the anemone release its grip on the rocks, and then the decorator crab gives it a new home on the back of its shell. Not a cheerleader crab, too? This boomba! This boomba! If the crab is attacked, a predator risks being stung by the anemone's tentacles. Are you sure it's not just having a bad hair day? Oh, Henry.
Lots of animals suck in air to make themselves look a lot bigger than they really are. Uh, Henry, don't go too far. What do you mean, too far? <laughs> Sometimes it's useful to have an inflated sense of your own importance. Snakes and lizards don't always get along. This snake is only out for an early morning slither, but the tegu lizard takes no chances. With a big hiss, he suddenly blows himself up and gives the snake a real shock. Time to leave as the snake searches for a more bite-sized snack. Hey, what about a tasty toad? Wow! The toad uses the same inflation trick, and the snake thinks it's actually too big to eat. Foiled again. It's time for the snake to pull a trick of its own. What's the trick? The snake is a false cobra. Not nearly as deadly as its poisonous cousin, but it can spread its hood to look larger and more aggressive. Did that scaredy lizard move? Sure showed him. Now, Henry, how about a game of heads and tails? You bet. How do you play? Look at all these pictures. Some are of animal heads and some of tails. You have to guess which. This is too easy, Prof. That's a zebra head and... No, no. Those are just examples. I want you to start with this pine cone skink. Uh, head. Or, or is it the tail? No, it's the head. I, I think... No, it's the tail. I'm positive. How about something easier, Henry? Aha! <laughs> now that looks like an eye, so it must be a head. That's what the owl butterfly wants you to think. The big owl's eye markings on each wing help to either scare predators or to make them think that its head is in a different place. I'm confused. Exactly. It's all about confusing the predator. Uh, head on left, tail on right. Wrong. Those are fake eyes on a cichlid's tail. I got it. Tails! Good. The hair streak butterfly rubs its wings together to mimic the movements of its antenna. What an actor. That'd get any hunter in a flap. Hmm, acting, huh? I'm ready for my close-up now. Are you talking to me? I'd be nothing without my fans. <laughs> you like me. You really, really like me, don't you? Typical Henry, acting the fool as usual. Why don't you leave this acting business to the professionals, like the greatest actor of the reptile world, the hog-nosed snake? Okay, I'm not so proud that I can't learn from a real actor. When this creature's frightened, he plays the part of a dangerous rattlesnake. He can even make a rattle sound. But it's no good being a rattlesnake when the threat comes from an indigo snake. They eat rattlesnakes, too. So he gives the performance of his life, acting out a dramatic death scene. If looking dead isn't unappetizing enough, he pumps out a foul death stench to turn the stomach of any predator. It satisfies the audience. The indigo snake doesn't want to eat anything that might be so sick it has convulsions and dies. It might be catching. That's what I call belly up. What an actor!
That's a snowy owl. Hey, is it Christmas already? I haven't even decorated the tree. No, snowy conditions can show you what sort of disguises animals use in cold climates. Ah, I get it. The owl has a white coat to make it hard to see in the snow. Yes, but the snowy owl stays white all year round. Other animals change to white coats only when the winter snow falls, like this snowshoe hare. No matter what time of year it is, animals rely on disguises. We've seen spots, stripes, and lookalikes, but in the end, animal disguises are a matter of life and death. So, Henry, I wonder if you've learned anything about camouflage today. Uh, don't get chased by hungry wolves. But if you do, make sure you've got a great disguise. After all, it'd be a howling shame if nature didn't provide animals with the advantages and protection of some amazing disguises. Yes, clever camouflage means that the snowshoe hair is all right. Or do I mean all white? I hope the variety of disguises we've seen has helped you to pick one, Henry. Like stripes or spots? Spots? Don't talk to me about spots. Anyone could spot me looking like this. Better leave it to those masters of animal disguise. Bye!